Manchester United take on Porto this week in the Europa League in one of two of Eric Ten Hag's last games. Is this the final week for Eric Ten Hag? Is Ten Hag on his way out of Manchester United? Can he save his job with these two games? I really don't know. It's two tough, tough games in the Europa League and in the Premier League. But let's get into this video. Welcome to the Red Devils Den. Man United in the Europa League so far. One draw against FC Twente, not a great performance. There were so many things wrong with that game. Didn't really do well. It wasn't really great. And we have to try and get a win. It's going to be extremely difficult um, against an op opponent like Porto. But I don't even think it's necessary to speak about the opponent because we have so many issues in the team already by itself. Now, the first thing that I'll start with is I have to start with Bruno Fernandes. Bruno Fernandes, we obviously know in the Premier League, got a red card. That red card has now been removed and he is back into now play in the Premier League. Obviously, he was going to play regardless um, in the Europa League whether he got a red card or not. Now, is this bad or is this good? I think it is bad. Bruno Fernandes, I think really is the example or is, I don't know, the poster boy of things going wrong for Eric Ten Hag. Um, I know he's the captain of the team, but oh my goodness, he has not been good for a very long time. And I was actually looking forward to seeing a team without him in it. And who knows, we might actually see that happen. We might see a team that doesn't have Bruno Fernandes in it come this Europa League game on Thursday. Could be very interesting to keep our eye on that. Why would I drop Bruno Fernandes though? Bruno Fernandes clearly is not suited to what Eric Ten Hag is trying to do. He is not a number 10 that can look after the ball. He's not a number 10 that wants to play tiny passes, tiny triangles, squares. He's not the kind of number 10 that keeps the, the play moving quickly. When the ball comes into him, he likes to stop and look around. In a type of style that Eric Ten Hag wants to play, obviously everyone has been saying we have no style of play. We do have a style of play. Our style of play is obvious if you look at the recruitment of Eric Ten Hag. If our style was not to play out from the back possession-based football, why did we get rid of one of the best shot stoppers in the world in David De Gea? Why have we not stuck with Harry Maguire and Lindelof as our defenders? Why have we brought in Manuel Lugarte? Why have we brought in a player like Joshua Xerxes, who is good with hold-up play, who is good at retaining the ball, good at dropping into midfield? Why have we done all this? Why is Ahmad doing well in this team? Which is another point I'll get to a bit later. But I don't actually think Bruno Fernandes is fitting, and I think it is starting to weigh on him mentally. And in the game, you can see he's really not into it. He's really not feeling it. And I think the problem that, it, that it's creating is it's bringing the whole team down because he's obviously not feeling it. And he's the captain. People are taking their lead from him. So unfortunately, the problem that we have now with Bruno Fernandes is that because he has to try and play himself into form, he can't really be dropped, can he? So it kind of makes it very, very tough for any other player to come in and I'm actually hoping I'm going to give you my team in a minute but I'm actually hoping that when it comes to maybe the end of Eric Ten Hag's tenure whoever comes in next will obviously change the tactics and it'll obviously work for Bruno Fernandes but um, let's talk about the team I just want to talk about Bruno because obviously his red card was rescinded he's always a big topic um, to speak about he always creates a lot of uh, division and controversy many people like it many people don't but let's move on the team will pretty much pick itself you will have to go for his strongest team obviously we don't have Luke Shaw we don't have Kobe Mainu uh, but for the rest of it we have the team this is the team I would go for I've seen quite a few people on X and YouTube speak about a back five this is very, very interesting. It's a tactic that Oli used before he went. Did it matter? No, it didn't. We, he still got sacked. Anyway, I wouldn't go for a back five, though. I don't think it makes sense. Um, I actually said against Tottenham that we should have gone with a midfield of Casemiro, Ugarte, Kobi Mainu, 
and whoever the 10 was. I didn't care who the 10 was. Mason Mount, Ericsson, Fernandez. I really didn't care. But I would have gone for a three-man midfield to bolster that midfield. And what happened in that first half, we were run ragged on that pitch. We were run absolutely ragged because our midfield was falling apart. Tottenham's press was absolutely ridiculous on us and we had no cover. So I would again, defense picks itself, Andre Onana, Masrawi, the lit, Martinez, Dallow picks itself. They obviously all didn't have good games against Tottenham, but they are our best back five and they need to play. Once again for my midfield, my midfield is simple. Casemiro, Ugarte, Christian Eriksen, Mason Mount. I would not want Bruno Fernandes to play in this game. I'd play Mason Mount. On the wings, obviously, Rashford will never be dropped. Ahmad should not have been dropped in that game. I mean, come on. Garnacho is a great player, and he is someone who can start a game, but I think he's such a good impact sub. Him and Rashford both, I think, are such good impact subs. Um, the fact that Ahmad had to be dropped was ridiculous. I would have dropped the striker. We didn't need a striker. Xerxes missed so many opportunities. Hoyland, obviously. Uh, but that's a story for another day. Like I said, I do not think Man United needs a striker. I did a video on this. I'll link it down below. We do not need a striker. We don't play a brand of football that is suited for a number nine. So we don't need a number nine. And my front... One, two, three. My front four... Um, for this game is simple, would be Ahmad, Rashford, because you will never obviously be dropped, Mason Mount in the false nine position, and Christian Eriksen in number 10. Simple, simple team. We don't need a striker. And what we do need to do is we need two people, Casemiro and Ugarte. Casemiro, yes, doesn't have the legs, but he looked good next to Ugarte. I don't think there was a problem there. We can't call on Kobe Mainu. He's injured. And even if Mainu was not injured, I would start all three of those midfielders, Casemiro, Ugarte, and Kobe Mainu. What is wrong with us shoring up that midfield? What is wrong with us putting a shield in front of our defense and shutting down the midfield, which we didn't do against Tottenham, knowing that they play a high position based football, knowing that they like to press, we should have brought in players that can counter that. Against FC Porto, we might see a different challenge, but I want us to be ready for that challenge and I would sure up that team. Eric Ten Hag has got to put players on that field that are able to do a job. Whether they care about him, whether they care about the club, whether they care about us as fans, he's got to put players on that park who can do a job. Casemiro, Ugarte, Christian Eriksen, Mason Mount, they have got to play because those are the players who can get on the pitch and do a job. Mason Mount has so much to prove. Christian Eriksen will be feeling so confident. Obviously, he would have gone straight into the number 10 role in the Premier League. Bruno is back now. I still think Eriksen should be given a go. My score prediction for this, I'm going for a draw again. I don't see us winning this game. Um, I think the players shown us against Tottenham that they are not really interested in playing Will this force Ten Hogs hand to do something very different? I really do not know. It's going to be an interesting one to see. But that's the team I would go with. I'll go with a draw of 1-1. Same result we had against FC20. I don't really think there's much in the game. I don't think from what we saw against Spurs, are we going to see a bounce? Are we going to see the players come back? I really, really don't think so. Considering some more news that came out, um, after the FA Cup, which I'll speak about on another occasion. But that's what I'm going for in this game. I really don't think that the players are that interested, but I would put out a team that is compact, a team that can stop the other team, because that's where we are. That's where we were under Ole Gunnar Solskjaer, and that's where we are now. We just have to stop the other team from playing. But if you enjoy the content, remember to hit that subscribe button. Let me know your thoughts in the comments. We have a massive week ahead of us in terms of games and I'll see you in the next video.